One Punch Man webcomic chapter 119. So this was a very interesting chapter, very informative. I did not expect any of this stuff, but this is, I guess, kind of been part of the course with the webcomic chapters. But uh, let's get into it because we've got a lot to talk about. So I'll briefly go over the first act of this chapter because it's like basically Saitama in an Asekai series, but he just speed runs it and it's hilarious. I really like that one decided to include this. It's just like a fun little side uh, quest or just entire, like I said, speed run of a game or an Isekai series for Saitama just for fun, just to have him something to do. And also I kind of bridge the gap between these two arcs because we just ended the ninja arc and now we're going into whatever the hell this arc is going to be. I mean, obviously it's starting with the mind mask and all of this stuff, but it might lead us into the Neo Hero stuff possibly because it is talking about the Hero Association trying to establish Saitama as a mascot, but we'll go into that. But I really like just that Saitama got to have fun in the beginning of this chapter. And it almost makes you think like, did it even happen? But then he comes to talk to Genos later and he does basically confirm that it did happen. Like he did speed run all of that stuff and wound up taking out the dragon. And it also kind of gives us more insight into what's going on in the world. Because while the world does seem modern from the outside, you know, like a modern society that we have in our own reality, there is still some kind of like medieval or ancient or just a uh, mythological aspect to the world there. Like this honestly could just be an OVA to itself. It was just a lot of fun. And I like that one uh, still has, you know, that awesome writing to him because he just wants to throw that in there every now and then. But now let's go into the portion where he talks to Genos because we might be getting some Chekhov's gun here because when he's talking to Genos, he's like, Oh, well, Dr. Kuseno has also shown great interest in Saitama's uh, physical abilities, and he wishes to collect your data in a more comprehensive manner. So this was said for an absolute reason, and I think this might be taking us deeper down the Mad Cyborg storyline, because I recently made a video about the Mad Cyborg, which I'll link at the end of this one. But I basically have Dr. Kuseno as very close to that storyline, and I think that Dr. Kuseno possibly made the mad cyborg or at least i think it's very likely that he did and this might ultimately mean that dr kuseno might not be the good guy that we think he is he might be actually kind of evil or something or maybe like lawfully evil maybe he thinks he's doing the right thing or something but also you know we have to remember that like the what he's saying here is collecting data in a comprehensive manner that sounds very similar to what the organization wants right and also in my in my matt cyborg video that i made i theorized that dr guseno inadvertently had made the organization by making the mad cyborg who i thought was probably drive night but now this might mean, now, you know, I'm just taking a guess. I'm not saying that this is absolute the truth, but this might mean that Dr. Guseno might have willingly created the organization. And maybe he is the true mastermind behind all of that. And maybe he's just using Genos for some ulterior motive I'm un unaware of possibly, or he is a good guy. And maybe we're just, you know, drawing two correlations together here, but nonetheless, I do think that this whole Dr. Kuseno being interested in Saitama is going to head somewhere, and I think it's ultimately going to connect with either the Mad Cyborg or the organization. All right, so now let's get into the big exposition dump from a mind mask here, because we're finally seeing what his true interest with Saitama is, and it's pretty much what we suspected. He wants to use Saitama in order to become a mascot, or at least that's what I straight up thought that he was going to use him for. And that's basically what it is. He wants to make him the superhero of society. But let's get into the history of the world, at least according to a mind mask. And this also reminds me of the history of One Piece because it is very similar uh, because the world was kind of just like into individual nations back in the day when they were constantly at war uh, over resources and stuff like that. And, and then just one day they decided to come together because the population was decreasing so much and they feared that they were basically going to go extinct. So they tried to preserve as much as they could uh, for their current and future generations. And then they unified languages and established a world government. That right there is verbatim One Piece's history, pretty much. And that was considered the first era. Now, when we come to the second era, we're seeing that like the aftermath of the world wars have made the earth the way that it is. Is. like it's kind of akin to our own but they have like a more rapidly changed environment not just from global warming which I, I assume is what one is implying here 
when he says like the increase in the environmental toxicity, uh, climate change rapid, obviously that's what we're talking about here. Uh, and then the rise in the sea level. And then he says it gave birth to a large number of harmful life forms. I assume they're talking about mysterious beings slash monsters here. And this forced humanity uh, to abandon much of the land mass on Earth, and then they all came together in a super continent. So as far as I know, this is the first time this has ever been confirmed. All of the individual cities go by numbers, and they're all kind of connected. Like, it's easy for heroes to travel in between cities and whatnot. Like, we'll see a hero in City A, and then they could just be in City Z, like, within moments. I mean, you know what I mean, because they move pretty fast and whatnot. So that means that everyone's on a super continent. And the only other time that we've ever really seen the geography in the actual world is when Saitama uh, serious punches the collapsing Star Wars in canon. And then we see that like where Saitama and Boros were in Z City, that was on the super continent. But then if you look over to the other side of the world where the, the atmosphere and the clouds are parting, you can see another continent. So I assume that that's one of the other land masses that a My Mask is talking about. And judging from how they had to migrate, I assume this means that over there, wherever that is in the other continents, it's pretty much like no man's land. There's might be like, I don't know, super powerful monsters over there. Like monsters so powerful that it caused everyone to come together in this super continent just to stay away from them. Now, I, it's of course not confirmed, we can only assume, but I think that's probably what's going on here. And this might lead to like a future development in the story. Because it's like, okay, maybe we have to go over there for some reason. Maybe it's kind of like the dark continent from Hunter x Hunter. And then that brings us to the third era, which we are currently in, or he says is upon us, which I basically, we're in it right now, because he says that it is where the intelligent monsters exist. And according to a My Mask, they weren't always a thing until like a few years ago. And this is implied numerous times throughout the series that more and more monsters have been appearing as of late, kind of like around the time that the Hero Association was established. Now, there's a lot of theories as to why this is. Uh, some people cl claim that it's because Blast retired and Blast was secretly keeping the world in balance by killing all of the monsters. That could be true, but I really think it has something to do with the god. And now that we're going back to climate change and the damage to the environment that has obviously been confirmed by the uh, humans have done throughout the world wars and stuff, I assume that it's gave birth to God, or at least it pissed God off or something, which makes me really further think that God is the earth or, or just the will of the earth or the earth like monster fight or something. Uh, you know how humans can, and it gave birth to God, like this ultra powerful being. Like if we're going off of what Vaccine Man said back in chapter one, and also like how God hates humans and also lining up with homeless emperors ideologies about them destroying the earth. I think this is obviously all connected uh, and obviously, you know, if we go back to Shibawa's prophecy and what, what Psycho saw using the third eye, it ultimately ends with humanity being killed, not the earth. It's, it's not about like the world exploding or anything. It's basically like humans dying. And uh, going back to what my mask is saying about the world wars causing uh, the earth to, you know, retrograde basically. It's all connected and I'm pretty sure this is all God's doing. God probably uh, it has something to do with monstrification, possibly. Something that I was a little skeptical to at first, but considering what my Mask is saying about how they're like or originating from humans, it's possible that, my, uh, that the god might be doing that to humans somehow, or he might be making it easier or something like that. Because we obviously know that he can make Homeless Emperor, but he didn't really undergo a transformation, but he also made Vaccine Man at the same time. A lot to talk about on this subject, but it really brings up a lot of questions with this. Uh, super interesting, and I love that one is finally uh, deepening the mythology and the lore on this world, which was much needed up until this point. But and then a My Mask goes into like what I was talking about with trying to make Saitama the mascot. He also wants to empower the weaker, uh, the weaker heroes in the association. Something that the Neo heroes. Uh, was going to do something that they were all talking about how the uh, the you know the hero association doesn't really do that they kind of just throw them into the deep end and you pass the test and then you're out in the open and then you just get killed or whatever but my mask wants to strengthen the c-class heroes 
He also wants to abolish the S-Class heroes. That's pretty interesting. That's probably going to head somewhere. It really is debatable how much power my mask ultimately has in the Hero Association, and I doubt they're going to be on board with him just abolishing the S-Class heroes. But if he brings Saitama to the Hero Association executives, and he's like, hey, we have the one above all here. We don't really need the S-Class anymore. We just need this one ultra-powerful guy. So I wouldn't take everything that my mask is saying right now as being set in stone, because also like Saitama is barely even paying attention, and he ultimately has to agree to all of this. And I think he's probably going to decline uh, my mask's ultimate offer here because like i said it would mean that the hero association would fully become aware of saitama's true power and then he would ultimately go to like the s class rank zero or whatever meaning that they, basically all of humanity would be aware that saitama is the one punch man and I, that's probably not going to happen until the very end of the series it, or it just never happens but if it does it's not going to happen right now but uh, as for everything else with the S-Clash abolishing, that might happen. Or this might lead to a My Mask going to the Neo Heroes and then bringing all of his stuff there. I I'm really, really intrigued. And we also got another chapter after this. Uh, one, you know.
being not in the best health at the moment. He released two chapters at once, and that's being uh, translated currently, and I will release an additional review for that when it comes out. But that's it for this chapter. I'm going to have to make another video on the fallout of all of the information that we got so I can keep it concise and packed together. But if you like this review, guys, please give it a like. Let me know what you thought about all of this. There's a lot to talk about. I'm sure you guys can't wait to get into discussions. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as well. And I have a Patreon. It gives you access to a weekly Q&A. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.